Okay, this video is on solving absolute value equations. The focus for this is more of an Algebra 1 focus. Uh, no variables on both sides, just the simple um, absolute value equal to a number. So when we're solving absolute value equations, we need to remember what absolute value means. Absolute value is a number's distance from zero on a number line. We look at a number line. We have 5 and negative 5. They are both 5 units away from 0. What this means is absolute value is always positive because distance is always positive. So when I say the absolute value of negative 3, that is positive 3. When I say the absolute value of 5, that is still positive 5. Now the absolute value sign uh, symbols cannot be distributed across like parentheses. So when I see a negative absolute value of negative 5, this is asking me to take the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5, and then multiply it by a negative. So we get negative 5 as the final answer. When we're solving equations, if I want to know value, what number is 7 uh, away from 0? That's what this equation is asking us. What two numbers are 7 away from 0? And there's not a lot of work required to do this one. We can see on the number line that it's positive 7 and negative 7. Both 7 units away from 0. So x is 7 and negative 7. As we get to adding more things inside the absolute value, we need a little more work to figure out the answer. Now, a lot of us can look at these and figure out exactly what the answer is. But part of the process is to learn the process with the easy problems so that when we get to the more complicated ones, we can figure it out uh, without having to just try to guess. So this absolute value equals 8 means that x minus 1, what's inside the parentheses here, could equal 8 but it could also equal negative 8 because both numbers have an absolute value of 8. Because of that, we can write two equations. x plus 2 equals 8, and x plus 2 equals negative 8. And then we use our algebra skills to solve. Right, everything happens on both sides of the equal sign, so we're going to subtract 2 both sides. So x equals 6. And then we will subtract 2 from both sides here from the second equation. And x equals negative 10. So these are the two final answers, 6 and negative 10. And this is the type of work we need to see. This is what it means when it says show your work. I want to see the process that you're going through. I want to see what you're adding and subtracting to each side. I don't want you doing stuff in your head. Because like I said, as things get harder, that usually leads to lots of mistakes. So let's do another one. What if we have the absolute value of 3p plus 7 equals uh, 25? 
So what this means again is whatever's inside could equal 25 or it could equal negative 25. And that's where we get our two equations. Because absolute value of negative 25 will also give you positive 25. So 3p plus 7 equals 25. And 3p plus 7 is equal to negative 25. And then to solve, okay, we use our two-step equations. We get minus 7. And we have 3p equals 18. And minus 7. And we have 3p equals negative 32. And then we'll divide by the 3. So p equals 6. And p equals, well, 3 doesn't go into 32 evenly, and they cannot be reduced. So I can leave my answer as negative 32 thirds. Okay. So you should be modeling this behavior, remodeling this solving techniques as you're working on the homework for tonight. How about 2 times the absolute value of 4y minus 6 equals 10? That's not going to work out very nicely. Okay, so... When we have stuff going on outside the absolute value, we have a 2 and um, here outside the absolute value bars. These cannot be distributed over. So this, we need to try to get the absolute value part by itself. To do that, we are going to divide by the 2. And this is a point of confusion for a lot of kids because they want to think that it's addition or subtraction, but this is multiply when it's 2 in front of the absolute value. So we're going to divide both sides by 2, and we get the absolute value of 4y minus 6 equals 5. A lot of students drop the absolute value here and then start moving on, and that's not the place to do it. We need to really be careful, because as we start doing these problems, this is the point where I'm going to decide whether or not it's no solution. If the absolute value is equal to a negative, then it's no solution, and I don't have to keep going. But if it's equal to a positive, then I have to write my two equations, and then you're going to write your two equations. We don't want to see students starting to solve the equation here with the absolute value bar bars. We want to see them write the two equations and then solve. So what's inside the absolute value can equal positive 5 or what's inside the absolute value could equal negative 5. I'm not changing any of the numbers or values uh, from positive to negative that are inside. That comes out exactly the way it is, and I'm just changing what it could equal. And then we're going to solve this. All right, this is going to be some nice pretty fractions. And we get 4y equals 11, and then divide by 4. So y equals 11 fourths, and then on the next one, we're going to add 6 again. The nice thing is we should be doing the same thing to solve the problem on the left as we are the right. And we get 4y equals 1, and divide by 4. Okay. So we divided by 4, and y equals one-fourth. So our two answers are one-fourth, negative one-fourth, and positive eleven-fourths. Let's do another one. How about negative two times, or yeah, just use negative two. Negative four times the absolute value of 2y minus 3 plus 6 equals mm, mm, 6. So again, we need to get our absolute value by itself. So we're working on getting this part alone. 
We're going to do that by first subtracting the 6. We always want to move the constant first, the value that doesn't have, um, it's not attached to the variable and it's not attached to the absolute value. And subtract 6. We get negative 4 times the absolute value of 2y minus 3 equals 0. And then this is multiplication. Even though we see that negative in front, students want to add. But that's multiplication, so we have to do the opposite, which is divide by negative 4. And then we end up with the absolute value of 2y minus 3 equals 0. This is the only case that there's only one solution because there is no negative 0. So now I can write the equation. And again, we don't want to start solving when we have the absolute value bars. We need to write it, uh, what the inside could equal. 2y minus 3 equals 0. And then solve it. So add 3. We get 2y equals 3. Move this up just a tad. And then divide by 2. And y equals 3 over 2. Okay, so this one again, we need to get the absolute value by itself. So we're going to start first by subtracting the 10 from both sides. We get 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 27. And then this is our goal, right? Get the absolute value by itself here. So... Uh, remember, this is multiplication, 3 times the absolute value, so we're going to divide both sides by 3. We get the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 9. And now the absolute value is not equal to a negative, so I have two solutions here. I write my two equations. What's inside the absolute value could equal positive 9. And what's inside the absolute value could also equal negative 9. So we have to write our two equations out and then solve. I'm going to subtract 5. And we get 2x equals 4. Divide by 2 and x equals 2. And subtract 5 on this equation. We get 2x equals negative 14. Divide by the 2, and x equals negative 7. So our two answers are 2 and negative 7.